Hello everybody, welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well, and today we're doing a box office breakdown for this past weekend, which saw the brand new film Civil War take the number one spot domestically, finally bumping off Godzilla X Kong, though Godzilla X Kong is still holding very strong, doing very well, has not, at least according to my random crazy charting, which takes into account what the actual takes from, this, uh, from the domestic uh, box office sales, international sales, the China split, into account has not actually broken even yet, but as I've been saying now for several weeks, it's definitely on pace to do so very easily. And this is all under with that massive grain of salt because we don't actually know how much Legendary is getting is going to be getting from the Chinese uh, market because all that we know is that it's better than 25%, at least according to the person who's in charge of the Wanda Group, who owns the, uh, who has the controlling stake, owns essentially the legendary production company. And so ultimately we have to take his word for it. And also we don't have the actual number in front of us. Some people have said, well, because it's Chinese owned, wouldn't that be 100%? But then you have to think about, okay, but how much of it's going to support the Chinese Communist Party government? And then how much of it's actually gonna be able to stay in the business itself? We really don't know those numbers and I doubt that we ever will. But until that point, all we can go based off of is the numbers that we have available to us, the typical rules of thumb that exist, and as of right now, it has not yet gotten there, but as I've said, even though I'm not a fan of that franchise whatsoever, I do think still, ultimately, it's going to be able to make its money back, and definitely has shown itself to be a much better performing film in the entire franchise compared to the last releases, probably going to end up being the second or third best performing MonsterVerse film, so hey... Again, definitely moving in a good direction there, but also going to be real with it, too. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit just more about Civil War because I have seen this movie. I overall thought it was actually pretty good. This has been very divisive amongst especially members of the Fellowship, but there are definitely two sides that seem to be coming out. Very appropriate for a film named Civil War, but we'll talk about that and a plethora of other films as well. Before getting further, though, please make sure you smash that like button. Line up that fire button over on Odyssey and smash the rumble button as well. Also, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with that bell notification. That way, you know every time a video or live stream goes live on the channel. So, I apologize for not having a preview, a box office preview for this week. As you all know, things have been uh, crazy at home, crazy with school, getting closer to the end of the year. So, all these things have kind of gotten in the way. So, I do apologize for that. But I do want, of course, continue to bring these box office breakdowns and continue, of course, to write articles featuring the box office breakdowns over at geeksandgamers.com. So, check those out if you have not done so already. So, Tony. Good old Tony over at over at Deadline says here, Civil War takes the box office spoils with 25.7 million opening. Now, this is actually a much better opening than the initial anticipation going into the weekend actually was. One of the other reasons why there was not a preview for this weekend is because the site I normally use to kind of help break these numbers down, Box Office Pro, has seemingly kind of gone Dark. I don't know if it's because of the fact that it's just covering nonstop CinemaCon stuff. Uh, obviously, a lot of reveals, a lot of trailers and things like that. But even people that are diehard members of the site in their comment section on their site were kind of calling it out saying, what in the world is this? They didn't even have a chart this week showing the kinds of drops between uh, last week and this week, things like that. So... Yeah, let's just say it's not looking good for that one. So one of the reasons as to why that is the case. But I know that Tony was saying just just this the other day, uh, as of Saturday, that he was expecting it to be around a twenty plus million dollar opening. So the fact that it's gotten to twenty five point seven is definitely a good sign for a strong opening. The question ultimately is going to be though: Is this film going to be able to survive? past its opening weekend. We're obviously in the month of April after very busy March. We're continuing on not having as busy of an April, but we're very close now getting into a you know, halfway point of this. And so May is right around the corner. And we all know that May is when a lot of the summer blockbusters start to rev up. And so we still have a lot of films that are going to be able to provide some competition but we had been talking about this already with Godzilla X Kong, that there's not a lot of big releases for quite a while, at least last I had checked. So Civil War could also potentially benefit from that as well. What is interesting, of course, is that Tony has decided just to take all of this from a political lens. And again, can't say I'm too surprised for Tony doing this, saying A24 is calling Civil War at 25.7 million, largely fueled by Democrat and liberal moviegoers, but with overperforming business in some red state regions like the South and Southwest. So he's continuing just to focus on this. He even breaks down the fact that of the political persons, right, people who can consider themselves political in any way, 
22% consider themselves to be liberal, 19% Democrat, 11% consider themselves moderate, with 6% registered Republicans. And the reason why this stuff drives me crazy is because when it comes to just movies in general, most of us just don't really care about all that kind of stuff. I mean, I think that this, if anything, is going to give more fuel to the people that have been critical of this movie, because a lot of people in their criticisms have really hated it more so because they feel like the director is, you know, kind of sub subverting you know, kind of underhanded and maybe in some ways overhanded ways, trying to connect the president represented in the film with Donald Trump, with some of the you know comments and some of the quotes that he has and the way that he's being presented. And obviously, people who are going to be of that mindset are going to read that into the movie also. But as someone who was trying to find it and look at it from more of an independent, moderate lens, it was definitely one to where I could see why people from both sides of the aisle could be reading a lot into the movie, both in a positive and also even in a negative way. Whereas for someone like me, I said, oh, okay, all this really tells me is that, yeah, these people in the media, especially these 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 war correspondents and media in general, man, oh man, do they just become completely desensitized to all of this stuff? And really, it just kind of shows you the type of evil that is present in a lot of these people's lives because of the fact that they just, again, refuse to sometimes act. They refuse to try to help people. They refuse to do it because it's all about the shot. It's all about basically their own egos. And so that's why I actually liked it a lot because it was actually more so critical of media in a lot of ways, though I could also totally see how someone could also look at it as almost it trying to glorify this type of journalism. But that's, again, I think what's interesting about the film is that it does cause this kind of civil war battle between people from all different kinds and all different sides. Of course, the media is going to try to continue to stoke the political flares because that's just what they do. And so I'm not surprised Tony bringing that up in just the second paragraph and the first paragraph itself already bring up just the concepts of Democrat, liberal, red states, etc. And then going into the actual numbers. And I just have no time for you, Tony, this week. Patui, I spit at you. Anyway, going to the global box office, it says, led by Dune Part 2 and Godzilla X Kong New Empire, Warner Brothers has crossed the billion-dollar mark at the international box office, becoming the first studio to reach the milestone this year, getting there in just 15 weeks. This also sets a new speed record for Warner Brothers, besting the 17 weeks it took in 2018. The full international estimate through today is $1.04 billion. Now, I always like to add on this caveat because even though you're going to have, you know, this type of information coming from Deadline about, you know, this reaching a billion dollars, always take that also with a grain of salt, right? This is not me trying to go after Dune or Godzilla. It's more so just trying to be honest. Just because a franchise or just because, in this case, a studio makes a certain amount of money at the global box office does not mean profitability. Also, in comparison to other years, though this might be, right, Talking the new speed record, speed record does not always account for one total box office by the end of the year, and also what kind of profitability did they see? Because something tells me that the 17 weeks that it took in 2018 to reach that point probably brought about brought, probably brought about a lot more profitability for the studio back then because of obviously ticket prices being different, but also the fact that the budgets themselves, right, would have been a little bit different also. So obviously we look at how these budgets have been overinflated for a very long time, right? They've been spending way too much money on these things, but ultimately more people were still going to see movies back in 2018 than they are now. And all the numbers really seem to indicate that, right? They've even had to admit saying, even though this number looks really good for Civil War, it's still a far cry from what was happening last year with films like the Super Mario Brothers movie, for instance, and then also still off from even pre-pandemic levels. And so again, okay, you have a kind of win here, but again, a billion dollars doesn't mean anything if you take into account how much money it took you to get to that billion dollars and between Dune and Godzilla, that's a lot of money that you're sinking into it, not just because of the budgets, but also marketing costs, but then also how little you get back return on investment with most of that money being made overseas versus anything domestically, right? Obviously this talking just about the international numbers there. I just want to put that out there though, because it's always important to provide context to these things oftentimes not brought up by the mainstream media. Talking now about the charts, because we love charts here at OMB Reviews, going to thenumbers.com, and as you can see, the number one film is indeed Civil War, uh, easily beating Godzilla x Kong, 25 million to 15 million. That doesn't really mean much when you still have to take into account the fact that Godzilla, now out in its third week of release, is still having a pretty, again, decent hold. Now, 50% is actually going to be towards the higher end. We saw the film actually have a better hold than what would have been expected last week for a bigger budgeted film. So this is definitely, I think, a bit of a steeper drop off than what some would have expected, right? In a lot of other cases, we've seen films that have had, you know, strong week one to week two holds or better than expected ones, be able to do more so in like the 30 or 40% range in the third, fourth, fifth week, etc. So it is still losing quite a bit of audience, but it is also going to be 
kind of one of the few films out that's going to be able to bring people in. And so that's why I still firmly believe the film is going to easily make its money back and be able to make some profits. The question just is how much based off of the information that we actually have available to us. Everything else is just based on pure speculation. So that's why if you are still someone who's going to be screaming in the comments about how it's made so much money, it's been profitable forever and everything, it's like, okay, show me the actual data to support that like again how much you get in the China split when you have a you know a studio in the case of legendary if you can find that information I would love for you to share it but again until you have that you're just speculating I'm obviously speculating too but at least I'm using data that's been confirmed and is available to us so anyway 50% drop still again relatively steep but also still hanging around quite a bit. I still think $200 million domestically is definitely on the cards and a possibility for Godzilla X Kong. God's, uh, let's see, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire dropping 36% in its fourth week of release. And so, again, not the worst drop-offs, but also a film that needs to make quite a bit more if it's going to hope to make its money back. Kung Fu Panda 4 coming in the number four spot, 29% drop there. And the number five spot going to Dune Part 2, dropping 42%. So this film is definitely on its way out. $300 million domestic is definitely not in the cards for this movie. But hey, probably ending still in that maybe 280 maybe even upwards of 290 domestically by the end of its run it also still has the possibility just like i mentioned with civil war and godzilla and really any of these films because of lack of competition to be able to hang around maybe a little bit more than what otherwise would be available that also still requires people to be showing up to the theater and as i mentioned just earlier the fact is people are going a lot less this year even compared to last year as we've seen these different types of dips monkey man the second week of release dropped 59 percent, so pretty steep drop for that film the first omen dropping 55 percent as well as a horror film and we have some box office estimates that we can now make for films like the first omen and also for monkey man as well going to individual releases though civil war at 25 million no numbers internationally this is also a film that let's just be honest it's not going to be much of an international uh you know interest it's a24 these films in general especially ones that focus more so on kind of american politics or at the very least an american story don't do as well typically internationally so i i don't imagine this film will have much of an international presence but again 25 million dollars is a pretty strong start the film did cost 50 million so it still has a ways to go but a definitely, a definitely a much stronger start than what they thought what they were going to have going into the weekend. Godzilla now at four thirty six point five million dollars. Now again, this is according to the numbers. I have looked at Box Office Pro, sorry, Box Office Mojo, and as of right now, when this is being recorded, so again, the people saying, "Well, I just checked Box Office Mojo, and it said blah blah blah." Okay, right now, as of the time I'm recording it, they had not updated it yet. Right now, this is the uh, the biggest number that's available, and so I'm going to give the biggest number because I think that's to be the most fair. $436 million is what the film has made so far in the first few weeks of its release, and so definitely on a very good trajectory. But as I've mentioned previously, it's still almost $100 million coming from China. Still, that means $200 million or so coming internationally, so the vast majority of its wealth coming from those international markets where they just get much smaller returns on investment. Still, domestic is a lot stronger, and I think that ultimately this film will be able to go toe-to-toe with a lot of the other films in the MonsterVerse, especially the last two releases, we can say at the very least, film doing a lot better than uh, other films in the franchise. So, hey, kudos to them for being able to bring more people back, at least compared to more recently. Not going to get close to the original numbers of the 2014 film. Probably not even also getting anywhere close to the numbers of uh, Kong Skull Island. Really the last successful that we can really say arguably successful MonsterVerse film. But ultimately, we still have a film that's going in the right trajectory for the franchise. Ghostbusters, on the other hand, not really going as well. And again, can't say I'm surprised because the film wasn't all that great. Kung Fu Panda 4, $423 million. Again, also not really doing well compared to other films in the franchise. But still, again, because of how little it costs, especially in comparison to those other films cost a lot less here. In this case, it tossed around $85 million. A lot of those other movies in the franchise cost, I think, closer to $100 plus million. So the fact that it's already made five times its budget is a very, very good thing, but also still a far cry from where it used to be, also showing us kind of the signs of the times. Dune Part 2 is at $683 million right now. It seems to be marching towards that $700 to $800 million final end, as I've been saying now for quite a while. It's not going to get to the same heights as at Oppenheimer. We pretty much knew that very early on based on the numbers that we had. 
This also is a movie that has uh, struggled a bit because of the fact it's made most of its money internationally. And again, a large chunk of that also being made in, in China, though luckily it has been able to make more in places like the United Kingdom and also make a lot of money in places like France, Germany, etc. So it has a bit of a different problem than what you had for Godzilla, right? Godzilla making $100 million, so about a third of its entire international coming from one country of which you typically get less. In this case, still a lot of it's coming internationally, so that's never a good thing. This film, though, was able to break even over the last couple of weeks, so it's adding on to its overall profits. Monkey Man at $22.8 million. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming they would have wanted a bit more. Apparently, there's some weird allegorical stuff going on in this movie, so I don't really have much interest in it. I, I did before, but then I heard about some of the, the stuff going on with uh, the T and LGBT issue, and I was like, okay, I don't want to really have anything to do with that in a movie that's supposed to just be an action film. And again, you might like it, you might think that it's not that big a deal, but for me, that's enough to, to say no thank you. And The First Omen, $35.4 million. This film costing a little bit more, if I, my memory serves correct, so definitely a film that is not set to, to be a guaranteed box office hit. Speaking of that, let's go to the shots, because we love doing shots here over at OMB Reviews. As I mentioned, going first with Civil War... The film costing $50 million means to make roughly around $125, maybe upwards of $150, $175 million to break even. So it still has a long way to go, and there's no guarantee. And I, if I had to go with my gut, I would say probably not going to get to that. But again, not a lot of stuff coming out, it seems, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, and so I think that it has a little room to play. But other than people just having genuine interest and, in, okay, what are people complaining about? What are people fighting over uh, as far as just, you know, whether it's a good film or a bad film? Like, what is it? It doesn't seem like A24 typically also is not the biggest moneymaker as far as just raw net uh, box office numbers. So the fact that this film did cost a little on the higher end, A24 typically has lower budgeted films. Uh, something tells me that this film probably won't be able to make its money back, but... I think the strong. I think the start is definitely a lot stronger. Uh, based on historical trends, typically films make around you know a third of their entire box office in their opening weekend, and so if that holds out, that would mean the film would make somewhere between maybe seventy five and a hundred million. So again, not enough to make its money back, but probably a lot more than what they would have been expecting. The first Omen, however, now after two weeks of release, we can make some projections. So based off of the two week number here for this film of thirty five million, projecting the film to make somewhere between fifty and seventy million dollars by the end of its run, it did. Cost Cost 30 million. So again, a little bit more, right? Typically, you would think for horror films, $10 million is probably a good metric there. Uh, but because it costs 30 right now, I'm projecting it to lose around 14 to 2 million. So there's a chance out there if it does better than historical expectations, hey, maybe it could make that money. But based on the numbers right now and the way it's tracking, doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Uh, the one benefit of Monkey Man is that it only costs $10 million to make. And so based off of the numbers that we have for this second weekend, right, this film going from $12 million to $22 million, we're projecting the film to probably get somewhere between $32 and $45 million by the end of its run. And because of having such a low budget, that means we're actually expecting this film to be profitable. So again, $4 to $12 million, pretty much on the cusp of profitability at this point. So hey, kudos to them for being able to make the film and market it in such a way where they spent very little on the film and then also were able to get more people than probably would have been typical for the kind of movie that it is. And hey, profitability is profitability. Going to always have to give credit where credit is due. Godzilla X Kong, as I've mentioned in previous videos before, right, the film right now, if you take the numbers as they are and just assume, right, that old school 2.5 multiplier, the film, therefore, would be profitable at this point in time, right? With upwards of getting to 100 to $230 million in net gain profit. But as we all know, one of the big issues when it comes to Godzilla and when it comes to any film with Legendary's involvement is the question of how much do they actually get as far as uh, receipts from the Chinese Communist Party and as far as the, the, just the Chinese box office in general. So using that charting method I mentioned in the very beginning, I've talked about it now for, for a long time, right? Using this understanding that typically 55% of the domestic box office goes to the studio, about 40% or so goes to, uh, from the international offices, go to the studio, and then from China, about 25%. Using those metrics, that means right now the film is around negative 18 million, so it's definitely made quite a long way towards uh, that break-even point, and I think, as I've said now consistently for a long time, I think it's going to be able to reach that point uh, pretty easily, probably by next week, uh, two weeks at the most, especially with little competition. And as I've always said, again, with it comes to the China number, if you disagree with that 25% cut, just remember, we don't have the actual metric to know whether it is how or rather how much better it is than 25%. Um, what we can say, though, is that even if it's a little bit better, right, even if it's 30, 40%, 
then again, this film is definitely making its profits. But again, not the big money maker that I think some people have in their minds about the kind of movie that it is. Um, I know a lot of people have been really big fans of it, have really been enjoying it quite a lot. And again, kudos that they were able to cut down those budgets a lot because that was the biggest issue they really had for their franchise, which led to 100, 150 million dollar losses because of just how much they spent and how little they made. And also, unfortunately, how much they made in certain markets. With that all being said, though, um, this is definitely a mark, uh, a march forward, right? This has already uh, made more money than Kong Skull Island based on the numbers that we have. And I think it actually has a chance of being the most profitable film on paper, at least uh, compared to films like Godzilla, even 2014. So even though the overall box office for Godzilla 2014 is still going to end up having been higher, it's looking like because of the overall cost difference between the two, um, you're probably going to still see right that that separation. Remember that these are the unadjusted numbers. And so therefore that 1.7 million in profit it's actually going to be a little bit higher if you actually adjust those numbers and so that's why it's looking like that at this point so might make the same amount of budget sorry the same amount of profit or a little bit more so definitely a movement in the right direction um, but still also not quite to the same extent and same level as what Godzilla saw in the 2014 release. Going back to the chart one more time, just to give any last updates. As I mentioned with Ghostbusters Frozen Empire at $159 million, right now it's $54 million in the red. Uh, it's not likely going to make that money back um, at this point. And again, that's using the non-crazy random charting that I use. Arthur the King also not looking all that great either. We talked about that from before. Imaginary uh, was able to finally get into the profitability territory at $4.8 million. And Cabrini... Uh, uh, 19.8 million because of how much money they spent. Not a film that has made much money. I think those are pretty much the only films that people have asked about at this point in time. But really, the question is going to be, have you seen Civil War? Is it any good? I really do recommend the film. And to make up your mind for yourself, I think that the, the scores over on Criticlist really do kind of give you a the best metric of what's going on because these are from normal uh, moviegoers, right? These are from people that are are big fans of movies themselves, right? Are, are film buffs. And out of the 20 people that have seen the movie... The majority of them find it to be a pretty good film, right? 70% is the right now the score, which is a rad score. So it's definitely on the cusp of, of you know, dropping down a little bit. Um, or sorry, actually, it has a little ways to go if it was going to drop into decent. But the fact is, again, most people think that the film is actually pretty good. And I do know the score has been driven down quite a bit from a couple of more recent scores. So I think that this one from Comic and Cosmetics, 29% bogus, is a pretty fair score. The 10% heinous score, to me, is, is a bit... Uh, you know, r r ridiculous. Um, so again, Master Roo, much love to you, brother. But at the end of the day, like, I, I just don't think that's, it's like when people give it, like in the case of John Parks, 100%, I think that those are unfair scores too, because I'm sorry, like, unless you are the best film of all time or a classic film that needs to be watched over and over again, no film should be getting 100% in general. But again, you have a huge mixture of people. I obviously gave this film a 75% rad score because I think it's a lot of fun. Go ahead and join over on Criticlist, though. A lot of people are starting to go over there now. Some big channels, big names are going to be starting to um, uh, be more public with their support of it, I know, in the coming days and weeks. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. But let me know your thoughts about that. And do you think that Civil War is going to be able to make its money back? As I said, even though I like the film and it's definitely doing better than expected, it has a long way to go, especially if most of the money is going to be coming domestically. So uh, we'll have to wait and see on that one. But your thoughts on that or anything else I mentioned in the comment section down below. If you like this video, smash that like button, light up that fire button, Aussie, smash the rumble button as well. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful for rest of your day and as always god bless And now for a special shout out to all of my April Chosen of Valhalla members, starting off first with those members over on Patreon, Father Luca Illich, Rosetta Allen, check out her YouTube channel as Eagle Rider, and Miss Martin Muses, check out her YouTube channel by the same name as well. To my Subscribestar members, we have Matt317, check out his Twitch channel by the same name, and ZK Man, check out his channel xtheboundaries.ceo, that's where you can find his website and his other social media platforms and also a huge shout out to my one youtube chosen of valhalla member mr roy 
always awesome. Every single member of my chosen is amazing. And if you want your name shouted out at the end of every live stream video or listed access to a podcast access also to a giveaways channel that I host over on my discord server or any of these other things that are offered, check out the top link in the video description below and become a member today. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people have a wonderful rest of your day, a blessed Easter. And as always, God bless.